third solo. Guy hit us with three solos in one song. I'll be honest with you, if you could play like that, I'd do it too. Welcome back and thank you for joining me for another reaction video. If you are new here, subscribe, turn on notifications and you'll get alerts as soon as these go live. Now, a couple things. First thing, a bunch of you have been calling out my cap that sits over there. Uh, so I thought I would wear it today and rep the Broncos. Uh, second thing, this is a personal request that comes from a subscriber and um, a patron supporter. And he goes by the name of Perivarium on YouTube. I think that's how you say it. Uh, I won't give out his real name because I'm not sure he'd want that. But I recently found out that it's his birthday today. And pretty much from day one, he's been asking me to take a look at um, one of his favorite bands called Caligula's Horse. You will have most likely seen him in the comments of a bunch of different reactions and um, <clears throat> particularly a song called Songs for No One. So uh, I thought, hopefully, first thing, happy birthday, sir. And hopefully this kickstarts what is going to be a lovely birthday under difficult circumstances that we're all going through. So I hope you have a lovely day and I hope I do this justice. Caligula's Horse, Songs for No One. Let's see what you got. We are all turning the world Just disconnected life We're learning how to fly And falling into all the mistakes We could erase Okay, okay, okay. Um... I, I like this a lot and I will tell you why. The first thing I noticed instantly is, okay, you got that guitar doing quite like high up work where he's sliding a little bit and he's doing what sounds like double time strumming, right? So he's strumming like as you, if you were, would alternate picking. Um, and he's doing that because when you put a lot of spatial um, effects and things on like reverb and stuff like that, you can get a really cool spacey effect if you're playing kind of really fast. Um, the other thing is the drummer was doing kind of this offbeat He's doing that kind of beat and then he went into your traditional 4-4 um, straight after. Now, even though he didn't start with that, I, I love that he didn't start with that firstly because of the vocal melody and how when he went into it, it felt like the vocal melody started to ride this wave with it. I thought that was really smart. But also your body instinctively locks onto the melody of the overall melody of the song. So you, even though they're doing different things and they're trying different stuff, you, you still know what's going on. You can still feel it. Um, and that's what I love about this kind of music. So I am pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Let's run it back. We are all turning the world Just disconnected life We're learning how to fly And falling into all the mistakes We couldn't erase By the bill we got it By God I will care for Nice falsetto. Great place to pause, exactly what I was going to say. When you have progressive metal or any kind of any kind of music that is challenging the norms within structures and time signatures and things like that, you have to have a very, very solid bassist. He is your support structure for the entire band. And it's not so much necessarily in terms of technicality, but it is more so in terms of tightness, um, uh, consistency it's those kind of things so he has to be able to hit those accents with the drummer follow the kick drum he's got to provide that that kind of wavy run that he's doing um when when everything kind of lines up and joins together he uh needs to be consistent and he is doing that now i know it's a music video in a controlled environment and they could have had a hundred goes at recording these takes if they wanted to but i would like to think and i hope this is the case that bands don't anymore try and do loads of stuff in studio that they can't replicate live and by the sounds of these guys i highly doubt that's the case but yeah i am pleasantly surprised with this and it's making me very happy I love the vocal melodies in this. I think he's been really smart about how they've plugged together. They are different, but they seem 
like they come from the same body. Um, the, for the first time there, I, I heard the guitar separate. And when I say separate, I'm not in, insinuating they were playing exactly the same thing before, but it, it just was distinctly different. And for some reason, I'm hearing the kind of higher up spatial effects guitar, the, 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 the lead piece, if you will, um, coming to, more towards the left um, of my of my headphones. And I don't know if I'm imagining that, but it is very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm always super interested and I'm always encouraging people to listen to how things are panned in a mix and where they're placed, because I think that is a lost art of trying to replicate those elements of a live performance in a studio album. So um, yeah, very interesting. Okay. 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 <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, man. I love when bands are like, that was um in the best way possible. That, that was, first of all, that was one of the best lead tones I've heard on a guitar in a long time. It had that big stadium feel to it, but he was really um, conservative. I, I don't, God, I hope I didn't stop it in the middle. Um, I stopped it where it felt like it should stop, but it, it felt like he, you know, he was doing this, solos are this crazy thing, man. They, <clears throat> it's basically freedom. No matter what the band's doing, as long as you roughly follow the same melody, you can run and do whatever you want. You can do anything, right? But he challenged that and he kind of, he had his thing where he was doing some runs, he was doing some stuff, sticking to the time signature, of course. And then he hit those little accents, dun 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 dun, dun um, with the other guitarist who kind of aligned up with him. And that's, it's not something they had to do. It is something that I am so glad they did because it is very impressive and it makes me smile. Can you hear, um, <laughs> oh, these guys, can you hear, there's this other guitar going, dun, 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 dun. like he's doing this like palm muted, um, higher up piece as well that fits in underneath and that only accented and started coming in after the solo piece. There's so many bits being introduced as we go. And I've stopped so many times, only a minute 13. This is a long song. I didn't realize seven minutes, 45. I'm glad I'm not going anywhere. the guitar now. Nice delay on it as well. Okay, you got the guitar with the um, delay on it again, and then you've got that tube effect that we always talk about, where they they basically push the high mids up, they take everything else down, and you're left with um, a lack. It's not only a lack of EQ in certain areas, but it's also an amplification of EQs that you ordinarily would want to eliminate to create that effect. Um, and uh, yeah, it's they do that because when they come back in with the rest of the band, they're trying to get your ears to settle so that everything else sounds impressive again when it hits. I really like this band. God bless the man who plays a Fender. I think it's a Fender, right?
Okay, that double double time kind of strumming, he's, he, he's pushed the, the chord progression a little higher that one time just to change it up a bit. There's something very interesting there. I actually, I, I got a little shocked because it sounded like... Um, I may be getting this completely wrong, but when that guitar came in and it hit certain parts, it sounded almost like someone growling. They they managed to get that distortion to, 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 I don't know if that was the goal or if I'm again just imagining something, maybe it's a lack of sleep, but that was very cool. I liked, because it adds a, uh, I don't want to say a heaviness, it adds an aggression to the song that I think up until now has been, these guys are just masters of melody, right? So up until now, it's been kind of the focus is ride the melody as hard as they can. But I like that they did something small there to kind of give it a lift. Yeah. So not trying to over sing the song. He's doing a really good job. This is this melody is sitting so well with me. Like I'm honestly, I'm loving this. You hear the bassist also following that pattern up. Sure, he came back for round two, huh? Um, obviously, the speed at the end there is is immense. The song, the tempo of the song is not very fast. Um, it feels it feels slower than a hundred BPM. It, it feels feels that way, but it's um because the tempo is slower. If you're gonna double or triple time something, sometimes that makes that speed. So so difficult to get to but he seems to have no problem doing that i really liked it just kind of proved my points earlier when i was talking about the freedom of a solo he was slipping on and off the melody and he was doing what he wants just as long as you stay in the key just stay in the pocket and you'll be fine and, and he played some really nice uh, very uh, very clear um slow windy bendy pieces a lot of the whammy bar which is a little bar that you use to shorten the bridge distance so you get that wobble out um clearly clearly great musicians Clearly. And ironically, the other guitarist who's doing more of the lead work in the verse, typically when you see that with bands, you think that that's the guy who's going to nail the solos because he's already doing some of the lead work there. But this is the guy who, what looks like playing most of those rhythm sections, has, has kind of smashed these two solos out. So they can all play, can't they?
see how gentle those harmonies are with the vocals. The video is cool, I don't know what's going on, but it's cool. See, it's that aggression that comes back in. It looks there <clears throat> as if both guitarists are playing that lower rhythm section, but I can obviously still hear the lead piece. So it'd be interesting to know how they tackle that live. Is that a thing where they use a loop pedal? Um, again, music videos are a strange thing. When you're doing hundreds and hundreds of takes of things, you do different stuff, you try different stuff, and you listen to the director. Um, and it may just be an edit thing where they've just edited a different section in, to be honest. But um, yeah, this is good. Round three. So nice after that intense solo <clears throat> to have everything dip down a level and have the bass kind of sit as the prominent fixture. Um, also, third solo. Guy hit us with three solos in one song. I'll be honest with you, if you could play like that, I'd do it too. You know what, man? Mr. Paravarium? Oh. Got helicopters. Don't they know we're doing important work here? Um, ignore them. <clears throat> uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a fantastic song. That was a great melody. Very brave, because to be honest, they... they I, I wasn't counting, but it sounds like they sat between... I'd say three. I'm, I'm not. I'm excluding the small showcase pieces, the bits where they dip into like the very reserved bits and the the faulted mic kind of chibi bits. They sat between three or four melodies throughout that whole song, and it's a long song. It's eight minutes almost. So, uh, very brave. But again, the strength of those melodies is the reason that song works so well. And also, it is one of those where I think if they cut it short, you'd almost be left wanting, but maybe not in a good way, because um, it's so good. Yeah, I know this is supposed to be like a birthday thing for you, but I got a lot out of that too. So yeah, happy birthday. Hope it's a lovely day. Hope everyone else having a birthday this weekend has a great one too. Um, and as always, please be safe. Please be nice to each other and have a damn good day.